without further ado, please join me in welcome Trek Fong. Thanks, Dave. Cool. Um, I got to kind of stay. I'm not going to worry about the camera too much. I'll kind of, I'll kind of just do my thing. So, um, the first thing I wanted to do was just get a, a kind of sense of the room. I was talking with some of the guys over here a little bit. Um, who has started a business of any kind before? I want to kind of get a sense of where everybody's at. And I'm assuming that everybody's in, in the entrepreneurship minor program, right? Or perhaps there's some that aren't. Everybody is? You're not? So if you're not, um, glad you came too. That's awesome. Um, so who, who has started a business before? So actually a fair amount, maybe a third of the group. Awesome. Um, and, you know, sometimes people think, well, my business wasn't legit or, you know, what do you really, what really qualifies that I actually started something? And, uh, you know, I really think that, that wherever, whatever we, we do along those lines, you know, it helps to just move us forward. And I want to talk more about that as we go along. But, um, you know, truly, the road to success is never a straight line and to kind of start off I want to talk about this egg so I actually borrowed this metaphor from one of my favorite business books has anybody ever read good to great before um, it's for whatever reason I mean it's not for whatever reason there there are lots of reasons but um, it just struck a chord with me and I listened to it. I had it on audio CD and listened to it maybe like seven or eight times and just kind of soaked it in as I was really trying to grow Linkwix, which you know I'll tell you a little bit more about in a bit. So I kind of borrowed this this uh, metaphor from from Jim Collins that wrote that book. And basically um, you know we have an egg here, right? And this egg is kind of unassuming, right? It, it sits there. It, uh, nobody pays a lot of attention to it because it's just an egg. And, you know, it's certainly not making any headlines in the, the local newspapers, right? It's just an egg. And, you know, that's, uh, that's all that's going on. But there's something going on on the inside, right? Um, one day... It's actually 21 days. I looked it up that an egg, you know, from from the time it's laid until the time it hatches, it's exactly 21 days. And you know, one day, ka-chow, there's a chicken that pops out, right? So, um, if if the newspapers were going to publish it, there might be headlines like, you know, chicken, baby chicken emerges overnight. It um, you know, chicken shows up, you know, where did he come from or whatever. And so uh, we'll come back to and talk about our chicken and egg friends. It's really the chicken that came out of the egg, but we'll come back and talk about that a little bit later. So uh, I wanted to kind of set the stage. So a little bit about my story, uh, and that's really where I'm coming from today. Um, I thought I would tell much of my story, um, even though there's still much of it that needs to happen in the future, um, and and just some of the lessons that I've learned along the way, and kind of the things that that I wish that that I would have understood, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, and um, and hopefully something that I say will will strike a chord with you guys. That's my hope. So. Um, on this first slide, if you look at the bottom, uh, there's uh, one of the first lessons that I learned, and this plays a role as I you know, went along many times, that connecting with people and asking sincere questions can be an extremely valuable thing to do. Uh, I'm sure you guys have found that. So, um, you know, I was going to Weber State here. 
I was trying to figure out what I want to do with myself when I grow up, and I I thought about business and thought that's what everybody does when they don't know what they want to do for whatever reason. You know, that was just kind of the thought in my head, and um, you know I. I was taking Spanish classes, had learned to speak the language, and uh, you know, just kind of really enjoyed that and found it somewhat easy. It was natural, and so I just kept kept going, and ended up with a Spanish major. Um, but in the process, I spoke with with some different people. I spoke with the the department head of the foreign language department, and I ended up getting connected with a gentleman named Dave Clark. So Dave um, had built a, a software company to teach language. So kind of like Rosetta Stone, um, not as big, but he had the successful company going and had created these software programs. And, um, and so I, I spent some time talking with Dave. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking, where do I go from here and what do I do? And... and uh, And out of those conversations, the idea came, okay, I'm going to take the software program and the tools and the different things that Dave created with his company, and um, there's a need for people to learn to speak languages in in companies in Utah. Um, So at the time, I was just kind of thinking Utah. And and so, uh, you know, it's crazy, but I, I thought it through, and a couple weeks later... I decided I'm going to quit my job at, you know, working for my dad, my landscaping job, and I was working at a recording studio just kind of, uh, you know, on the side, um, almost doing a a kind of apprenticeship sort of thing. And so I just said, I'm just going to go for this, and part of the motivation was that I had my first kid on the way. And so, and that that played a role too, that it's, um, you know, it's about finding why you're doing something and then I found that motivation you know can be very hard to find when you're not focused on the right why but when you are there's there's an incredible amount of motivation and energy that can get behind something and uh, and that's that's kind of what I found at that point and I'm really happy that I did because you know it it caused me to take that leap. So, uh, so I started this company. At the time, it was called Northern Utah Academy of Spanish. And you know, I formed a, a business plan, um, set up the you know the logo, and kind of got some marketing stuff together. Had my my idea um, put together, and essentially, I I went out and started knocking doors. I'm like, okay, I need a customer. If I'm going to actually be able to pay the bills, where do I find customers? And so, I remember being, uh, you know, putting on my black leather coat. So this was in 2003, and um, walking down the streets, literally like walking into businesses and saying, "Hey, would this be something that would be helpful? Would you guys uh, benefit from learning to speak?" Spanish to help your customers better. Um, eventually, I started asking the question: Would it be beneficial for your employees to improve their English? And you know, also went in in that direction as well. But um, but literally, I was I was knocking doors and looking back. You know, that was an important step, although it wasn't very effective. Uh, but you got to do something. I mean, what do you do? You just have to, you got to find a way. And so I remember, uh, I remember after doing that, coming home, and I felt like that guy. I felt like this guy, except of a nice, you know, instead of a nice table and cufflinks and all that stuff, I had a card table in my apartment. And um, my wife, April, who's here today, she'll remember that, that black card table. That was our kitchen table. Um, and, you know, I, I remember sitting there and very distinctly, 
it was all I could do to hold back the tears because I had gone out, I'd made this decision, it was time to, to make this happen. I have a kid on the way and it, um, you know, it was, it was just, it felt rough. I don't know if anybody relates to, to anything like that, but, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what was going on. So, um, luckily, here's the thing, I believed that, that this is something that, not only that I could do, but I really felt like this is what I'm supposed to do for my family. And, you know, I definitely haven't always felt that way about everything. Sometimes you just say, this makes business sense. I'm just going to work on it. I see the numbers and, you know, you go for it. Um, in that case, that's how I felt. And, you know, that was the thing that drove me through. And, and looking back, it really wasn't that long. I've been through much longer spells of, uh, you know, challenges than just four or five months when things started to kind of take off. Um, but that, but at the time, you know, that, that's, that's how I was feeling. So, um, my first, my first kind of set of customers were actually real estate offices. So in the process of knocking doors, I walked in, I'm like, Hey, can I just get a, uh, a few minutes at your sales meeting. So I walked into like Coldwell Banker and some of these bigger offices around the area. And they were like, okay. Um, and I told them what, what my intention was and they thought, okay, that could be valuable. And so I went in there and, you know, everybody gets together in their sales meeting. It's kind of something like this. Everybody's sitting around eating a donut or whatever. And, and you're like, okay, here's what I have to offer. Do you guys want to reach, uh, better reach the Spanish speaking market uh, here in Utah as real estate agents or as loan officers. Um, I'm offering a class that's focused on real estate um, to teach you to speak Spanish for, you know, for your industry. And I ended up getting um, like maybe 10 or 12 people that signed up. And I didn't have any overhead. Uh, we did it at their office, which was convenient for them, but cheap for me, right? And... Uh, and got these people together and we you know we would schedule the conference room for the next six weeks twice a week and I gave everybody the software program and explained the homework and then you know went for it and uh, and I thought okay this is this is good and I went to some other offices and ended up getting like maybe three or four of those kind of groups going and so I'm like all right so this is this is starting to work however I don't like having to sign everybody up, um, get them to pay individually. I really like the idea of, of working with a company, you know, give them an invoice for X and you get paid and it's just more simple. And so I kept working on that and I ended up talking with a guy who referred me to the training director of Utah Transit Authority and that's, that was my kind of first big break. Um, and as I mentioned, four or five months into the company, that's where, where I first kind of found the, an opportunity that was, uh, you know, that could really pay the bills and kind of propel things forward. And so there were maybe around 50 people that we were training, kind of set up this whole program. Again, it was customized to them and, uh, and you know, designed it for them. And, and uh, that was... That was a really critical moment because had that not happened, everybody has a runway, right? There's a point at which you're just like, okay, I didn't, I just can't do this. I gotta go find a job. And so, so uh, I'm really grateful that I talked with enough people that I got connected to that guy, and the opportunity arose. So, um, you know, kind of fast forward a little bit. Same company, but it was time to rebrand because I didn't view this company anymore as just a company that could be in Utah. The first logo was kind of ugly anyway. It was time to kind of, you know, do it better. And so, uh, you know, I, I worked with a, a marketing firm and kind of went through that whole process. I would joke, go home and joke and say that, uh, that picking a company name and logo and everything is way harder than 
than picking a name for our babies, right? Um, you know, my wife says, what about this one, this one, or this one? And I'm like, one of those two is fine. I don't like that one. And, and you know, you just kind of, maybe it's not that easy, but <laughs> um, this, but, but figuring all that out, it was, it was, I just, I wanted it to be perfect. And that's kind of my personality. And it's, it's, of course, you know, in some ways it's a blessing, but in other ways it's definitely a curse. Um, and it plays a role. I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I always want to have everything figured out just right. And before I take a step, it's planned out. And, and every step I take is going to be successful. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's how I want to do things. But in reality, it's kind of a problem. It, gets, it makes me go slow and it gets in the way. And so I've learned a lot about really kind of moving past that being willing to just jump, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so, so the company became Linkwix. Um, kind of has the whole language and, uh, you know, quickly learn idea built into it. Um, I ended up, you know, hiring my first sales team member. That felt like a gamble. I, uh, in fact, you know what's crazy is I borrowed money from Dave Clark the guy that created the software company to be able to pay that person so that you know we can move forward. I don't know that I ever told April that either. My wife, so this is kind of fun, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I I borrowed some money, you know, and it was it was a business borrowing money, and uh, and I hired that person and uh, and trained her, and you know. What else is funny is that I was interviewing people and she wasn't even on the interview. You know, I hadn't scheduled an interview, but she walked downstairs in the office building and um, she was supposed to go to her insurance agent's office and she was like, um, I think I'm in the wrong place. Because I had asked her, are you here for an interview? And she's like, oh no, I'm here for that, but hey, what's it about, you know? And so long story short, I ended up hiring that person and so it's kind of kind of cool how things work, but um, it definitely felt like a gamble. And it ended up paying off though. And it's not like it paid off immediately. It, it took time and it took persistence. Um, but but you know I was able to to pay Dave back that money um, pretty quickly, and then that was just kind of you know out of the way, and then we could we could proceed. And so. Um, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose with, with the gambles that we take. And I would honestly recommend that we, we don't take gambles that are going to wipe us out. That one wasn't going to wipe me out, but it would have been really painful and it would have been a setback. And so, um, you know, sometimes you just have to follow your gut too and, and go for it. Um, so these were, these were exciting, an exciting five years. We, the uh, company grew an average of 70% per year um, over those five years for five years in a row. And so it just kept kept growing. And uh, it, was, it was because of those five years that, that, you know, Dr. Nowak mentioned the SBA Young Entrepreneur of the Year for the state of Utah. Um, just, you know, a little bit of recognition. And, and that was... That was fun to to go and you know give a little speech and whatnot. Uh, it's interesting because I remember going and thinking this is really cool and and it kind of validates some that you know I've done something good. But uh, all these people have no idea the the weight and the challenges that I'm dealing with right now. And and so I had kind of mixed feelings. Uh, about what was going on, but I'll, I'll talk more about that too. So, um, I want to come back to our egg a little bit. So, we mentioned that that our egg, you know, is just an egg. A chicken popped out, big deal. But what I wanted to to get us to think about is what did it feel like to the chicken? You know, headlines in the newspaper said, overnight, 
the chicken emerges. Overnight success, right? All of a sudden, this dude or this chicken um, or this chick <laughs> or whatever is is on the front page of Utah Business or Forbes or uh, you know where'd they come from and and it was like overnight success you know we see that right and we think even if we don't see them on a magazine because that's maybe big deal you know that's big time but um, we see people around us and we think uh, you know they just got lucky or they uh, you know things came together and and sometimes things do come together sometimes they don't but. To the chicken, there were a thousand tiny steps that were required to get to that point. What did it feel like? It felt like being cramped in a little space. Um, you know, I don't think the chicken was thinking about it, I'm guessing, but, you know, the chicken had to grow bones. That's hard work. Um, the chicken had to grow organs like a heart and a liver and everything else, and feathers and a beak. And, you know, I mean, day after day after day, just building itself and getting to the point where it could eventually poke a hole in the shell with its beak, which, which that step is, um, I would imagine, very hard work. But it's only step number 1,000, you know, in 1,000 steps. Um, so everybody sees this egg sitting there and all of a sudden, boom, you know, success, right? But in reality, um, to the chicken on the inside of the situation, it felt very different. And, um, and I wanted to, to really point that out because that, that is, you know, that's how it is. That <clears throat> for all of us here that, that have an idea or don't have an idea but just a passion or a desire... Um, or even just interest in being able to find success in starting and growing a business of any kind. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the methodical steps just keep moving forward and then eventually, before you know it, you poke your beak through the shell and, you know, you have a cool moment. Um, but on the inside, it's just like, you know, it's just another day. I still have to go back to the office tomorrow and and uh, tackle all these things. But um, so um, I'm just going to say Dave because I prefer Dave. Um, but Dave mentioned that I really enjoy mountain biking. In fact, I I I haven't always been so into it. I haven't always kind of taken the time to get into it. But I've really really enjoyed um, getting into that more and more this year and um, and so this this is a picture of me um, if you park at Snow Basin and then ride to uh, it's called Sardine Loop and then there's this Mount Ogden Overlook has anyone done that before? Uh, a couple people nodding their head um, and I just kind of really fallen in love with with the the challenge and then being up there and that feeling and then being able to have the reward of cruising down and have a little bit of a thrill and it's like it's the perfect package you burn a ton of calories and uh, and so anyway um, when we are when we're climbing a mountain right we usually want to go straight to the top uh, well, I mean don't we want to right that's we try to find the most direct route between point A and point B and get straight to the top. Um, but the way that it really works is the only way that you get to the top, unless you're like crazy or you have a rocket or something, then you know it, it takes a series of zigs and zags to get to the top. And again, relating that back to, to building a business, um, you know, there, there are many zigs and zags. And if we think about it, when we're zigging, right, this way, it doesn't feel like we're going toward the top of the mountain. We're going off in some other direction. Or we're zagging, and again, we're kind of heading over here. But in reality, we're working our way um, to the, the general direction that we want to go. So I, I want to kind of 
you know, pause and talk about some some important aspects of this right now. So, um, actually, caught, I got the whole zigzag idea from a guy named Rich Christiansen. Um, he wrote a book called The Zigzag Principle, and um, I talked with him a couple weeks ago. I had talked with him before. Um, I, I sat down and had kind of a, a a personal feedback interview, which I'll tell you more about that part of my journey, because uh, probably one of the most valuable things that I'll tell you about today is that. Um, but, you know, he, he says that the first zig of any business, and this applies to many things, is to drive to profitability. So, what does that really mean? You know, you... Like I was saying before, we have we have kind of a runway, right? And if the plane doesn't take off before the runway ends, it crashes. Or it's forced to hit the brakes and stop. Whatever the case might be, you, you have to drive to profitability because you only have so much time before, you know, you, you just run out of money. And so, for most people, right? So... If that's what we need to do, then you know, going back to my real estate example, I didn't. The, working with the real estate offices was was a good start. It was, you know, it, it was never going to scale in a big way like I wanted it to. Um, there were a lot of challenges, and and I don't know if anybody does real estate in here, but um, kind of flaky, you know the. Like people would actually pay for the class and then not show up ever in some cases, and you know that's fine, but I wasn't really interested in taking their money and not providing value of some kind, uh, although I never gave the money back uh, but the those real estate offices were kind of like that first zig that was me driving to find some cash to be able to um keep doing what I needed to do for you know a few more months until I found that big first break which was Utah Transit Authority and then you know many others after that bigger and bigger um, but uh, but that first zig is critical so um, you know I say here that it's always quality or marketing I, I think that applies to if a product is not successful or if a service is not successful it's usually either a marketing problem or it's a quality problem either your product is it may not suck but it's you know nobody wants it and so we kind of have to face that reality um, or sometimes we have something that's really amazing to offer but it, we have a marketing problem, like nobody knows about it, right? So those are kind of most, if it's not moving forward, it probably falls into one of those two categories. Um, so as we look at our own situations and say, who's, who's by the way, um, who has an idea in mind or something that you're already working on? Who... Who would love to kind of find or generate something that you can really get excited about but haven't quite found that yet? So a few people, and probably there's some of both, right? Uh, many of the people that have their idea would also like to, to find more. So um, just kind of looking in general at, at something very important I found. So... Providing value to other people uh, is a result that comes from many things that we do. And what we do is driven by how we look at things, our perspective. So if we think of kind of two ladders, you know, that we can climb uh, and we, we view when we're, what we're climbing toward is success, right? One ladder is like you measure success by saying how much, how much money am I making? In business, that's important, right? Um, how much money am I making? And as I make more money, therefore, I am, you know, as successful as the money I make. 
you know, if, if I make more, I'm more successful. If I make more, I'm even more successful. Uh, the the problem with that is, you know, what if what if you take a risk and you get wiped out? What happens then? Um, what if something happens? What if you have like a medical issue, you know, and you lose the money that you make? Are you all of a sudden at the bottom of the ladder now? Um, you know, that's that's one way of looking at it. So the other way of looking at it is is our ability to provide value in different ways to other people. So how do we provide value to people? Well, it's, it's a combination of all of the characteristics that we bring to the table. It's a, it's a combination of creativity, um, knowledge, skills, integrity, relationships. The relationships that we have that we've built, those are a way that we can be a value to other people and to the people that we have relationships with. So we can make a huge list of a thousand things that we might have in our arsenal that allow us to to provide a unique kind of value in the world, in the marketplace, whatever that might be. Um, and I really believe this. This ladder, as as we climb it, we focus on just being more and more valuable to those around us. Yes, it's a marketing problem if we're really valuable and we're not offering it to anybody and we're not like talking with anyone and we and we just are a hermit or somewhere in between. You know, but if somebody inherits a lot of money or they win the lottery, what usually happens? Let's say the lottery, right? That's an easy one. What where do they end up usually? Yeah. And it's because Wherever they're at on that ladder, their wealth will eventually always equalize with where they're at. Their ability to handle it and and be prepared for that, the wealth will equalize. It's just a natural result that it's going to come down to where you're at. That's just what happens. And if you have increased your ability to provide value and something crazy happens and you lose all your money, it's just a matter of time before it comes back up and equalizes with where you're at. And so as we focus on doing that, we, we find that opportunities arise that um, people, you know, will seek us out and, you know, we'll, we will be able to do good things and we'll be able to make money because real value is something that anybody's willing to compensate for if they really want what you have or you solve a problem. So... Um, we talked about a couple of these already. Um, I think it's worth saying that often we arrive at the end of a zig and a door opens to a zag that we never would have imagined. So again, we're going off in, in a different direction than the top of the mountain. But, you know, we, we get to this point and it's like, oh, a door just opened. I w- it was not on my radar. I had no idea that 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 even existed or that would ever open up for me but it did and I think I'm going to walk through that and so you zag in a different direction all the while with this this vision in mind of kind of the of the general end result again I told you guys that I like to have everything figured out and take every step and and it's kind of a, a weakness in some situations it's also good but it uh I, I want to have the destination figured out and every step along the way. But what's the likelihood that that my one idea of how things should go is going to play out? Like one in a zillion. And so, you know, there, there are a zillion other ways that life goes. And so you have to just kind of relax. Maybe your personalities are different. And so you, uh, you know, you, you're not trying to figure everything out. You just go with the flow and that's that's a good thing. So it's a balance, but for me, that's one thing that I learned. I continue to learn. Um, I was uh, I was up on that same mountain not too long ago, and got to a point where, you know, there was a fork in the road, and, and I'm like, I'm going to stop and take a breather for a minute, drink some Gatorade. And another mountain biker came up with his buddy, and they were doing uh, a much longer ride. And, and he shared this little bit of wisdom. He said, when climbing, don't look too far ahead. Just get to the next bend. Because if you, if you keep looking up, you'll just get discouraged. Even though you, 
you love it it's really hard work and and some days you just don't have a lot of energy in the tank and um, so if you just focus on getting to the next bend and then getting to the next bend and getting to the next hump in the in the trail or whatever then uh, then y you find yourself at the top eventually or before too long it's not it's not that far away and then there's another peak to climb and you know you keep going or you, you go back the next weekend or whatever but the uh, I think that's that's really insightful and that's helpful in many aspects of what we're talking about um, if we had to choose between a lack of planning and a lack of action I would always say a lack of planning like you know again going back to my personality but it went in doubt if you don't have it figured out just take action just go just try something and try to try to figure it out fast because if you can fail to you know it's the whole Thomas Edison thing right how many light bulbs I don't remember the number but he had to try a lot of times Dan do you remember the number 10, like 10,000 there you go something like that um, 10,000 so 10,000 times you had to try uh, and we probably don't have to try that many times with what we're trying to do but anyway you guys get it um, just just keep if you can if you can get a thousand tries out of the way in one month it only takes 10 months to get there or if you can get 5,000 done in one month it only takes two months to get there and you know you can still pay Rocky Mountain Power and Questar because you, you have the runway to do it right so um, uh, my last thought on this as we are trying to drive to that first profitability point that's so critical is if we look at our passion um, where our passion our skills and where there's there's where we see a demand where those overlap then you know that that's an area to look at that's kind of a, a sweet spot you guys have probably heard something about that before and so I found that going back to that and thinking about it on a regular basis is helpful so um, so I want to tell you I, I was debating how much I wanted to share about my personal life right um, and and I think I think I want I want to share with you guys if you're okay with it um, you know a couple things that are very personal because it's part of my story and I think that you know I wanted to be authentic with everyone about about my my journey along the way so um, I call this perfect storm around you know later 2008 early 2009 what was going on? There was a there was a recession that happened, and what's interesting is that wasn't the biggest influence. But I'll say that uh, my top two clients represented sixty percent of my revenue, big manufacturing companies, and um, so that was kind of a risky, dangerous situation. And it turned out that it hurt really bad because they, you know, Sweden said corporate headquarters in Sweden said you know we can't buy a pencil literally those are the words I'm sitting in in the office with the HR director that I you know had planned and done some great things with and she said they will not let me buy a pencil anymore until they let me know otherwise and uh, you know the the world was kind of having its struggles and so uh, you know, right there with that company, boom, 40% of my annual revenue and expected revenue because we had stuff planned. Things that were, were launching, things that were going to happen, um, programs that we were rolling out, and then it was just like, boom, cold turkey. And so that was, uh, that was a real challenge. And, uh, you know, depending on how profitable your business is, that could just, you know, cause you to, to stop. But um, a couple other things that were going on were that uh, that I had a, a key employee that stole from me, and 
and you know whatever it, that's all kind of in the past now but at the time it, it was also very hard it kind of compounded the situation a little bit um, but the biggest thing that affected me um, was actually um, our baby boy so we had we had a, a baby again you know I, I thought about do I really how much of this do I want to share but but it's important so we had a baby boy his name's Harrison and um, he died during delivery right um, and I didn't realize how much that would affect me but it did it affected me a lot um, for it took me a while to kind of figure out why I didn't feel the same about my business. Why I was, uh, why instead of having this to-do list and just going into the office and being like, bam, done, done. You know, throughout the day and you finish the day and your, your list is done and you're like, you know, I, I, that was an awesome day. Head home or, or whatever. Um, and, and here's something that I figured out. I hope this makes sense. It took me a while to kind of kind of put this together, but I believe, I do believe, and I did believe at the time as well, that there are principles that if we align our actions with those and do business in alignment with those principles and live in alignment with those principles, um, you know, dealing with people, you know, there are certain principles, and some of those are obvious, like, you know, have integrity or be honest with people and and it's like duh right but you can get away with not doing that for a while but eventually it all comes back and you fall down to the bottom of that ladder right and because your value is derived from building money not from value to other people um, it's going to be really hard to climb back up without doing more of that but um, I believe that you know because of that, if we if we do business in accordance with those those principles and try to figure those out and 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 do that, that our success is a natural result of doing things that way. Um, there's a lot more that we could talk about and a lot that I don't understand, um, but I think there's something important to that, and so I've tried to figure that out more and more along the way, and. Um, so what that does is it puts us in control of our of our future. What you know, what the outcomes that we get. But uh, this may not make make complete sense. But somehow in my mind, I was like, there was nothing that I could do to stop our baby from dying. There was nothing I could do, no matter how you know in alignment I lived with with this or that. Um, again, that may not make a lot of sense, but but somehow I sort of like put the two together, and and I felt I felt like I'm not in control anymore. I'm kind of powerless, and um, you know what if I what if I finish my to do list? What good does that do? Because my my outcome isn't as sure as I believed it once was. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So, um, so it took me a while to kind of like process all that and you know um, work through things. But you know, I've gained a, an incredible amount of empathy that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, that I wouldn't trade and and all these other things that again would be a different conversation. But um, I tell you guys that because that perfect storm of everything that happened, recession included, you can recover because you go out and find another client and you figure it out, but but that was the thing that was the hardest for me. And um, so, you know, but kind of moving forward, 2010 resulted in a nice recovery of revenues. Um, and some and you know many lessons learned and you know as I'll tell you in just a minute you know, I started going in some different uh, directions but one of those is 
adapt, right? If you don't zag fast enough, you might burn through cash, and I did. Um, I had I had a, a nice kind of stockpile of cash and was building the company, and then when revenue went away, I was not only you know taking some of it home, but paying employees, and I could not believe how fast I just burned through a lot of cash. And I, to this day, I think back and think, why did I not stop burning through cash sooner and do something about it? But I believed if I just kept, you know, working at it, I would turn it around quicker, right? But it, things take time. And, and I did do that. And, you know, that, that's a, another lesson learned. But, um, you know, focus on what you can control. And... and instead of getting overwhelmed by like the bigger picture and what you can't control. So again, just, just some, some lessons there. Um, how am I doing on time, by the way? Let me look. <laughs> A few more minutes. Um, so, so this is something that's really important. And I think, again, of all the things that I can share today, uh, this may be the most valuable. Because of going through this process was was incredibly helpful and it still is in many ways so um, I ended up talking with this guy who was the um, vice president of sales for a, a medical type company and he shared what he he shared his kind of strategy or his process that he used to to find a job um, and then I kind of adapted that in my mind. I'm like, okay, I want to sort of use this. This is interesting to, to help me figure out um, where, where do I want to really go from here because I was feeling like um, I have this, this great company. I've been through a lot, but I'm kind of feeling like after about 10, you know, almost a decade that uh, I want to. I want to do some other things. I want to kind of explore some other entrepreneurial directions and and try some different stuff. And um, so, here's what I did. I got a NCAA bracket that was blank, printed it off, and I started filling it out as I met with people. So, I I met with somebody. Started in the middle. So we start with the championship. And they said, okay, like, you know, Jerry Jones. Um, I'm, I'd really love your feedback. Uh, I'd love to, to sit down with you for a minute and kind of tell you what I'm, the direction I'm headed um, with, with some ideas that I have, with, um, with my career. And you're, uh, you've, you know, you're successful, you've been through some different things. I'd love to just kind of get your thoughts and feedback, and people love to help. As long as you're truly authentic and genuine about that, and you're not just trying to go in and pitch something because I wasn't, um, then that will, you know, people, people will respond to that. And so I sat down with, you know, the first guy, and I would take notes honor what they were saying because that's important they're sharing their wisdom with me and then say something like that was extremely helpful and it was because I would ask like really sincere questions what do you think about this here's the challenge that I'm facing Um, how would you work through that what would you do and you know people as I would too people love to help and I would say that was super that was incredibly helpful thank you um, who else do you know like yourself that I could continue to to kind of learn from and then I would just you know get a couple referrals and I would do the same thing again I'm not asking for anything other than just a little bit of wisdom and some feedback and, and their insights and I started filling this up and, uh, and it kind of grew and I met with like 40 Uh, 40-something people, and they were mostly uh, business executives, um, some political leaders, um, people that I just respected and admired in different ways. And, um, you know, entrepreneurs definitely were were a big part of that. Um, But it was a mix of people. 
And and for me, without going into all of it, that was that was one of the most value, valuable experiences of my whole career that I've ever had. I, and I did that over the course of maybe five or six months. And so, you know, every week I was meeting with somebody. And um, and by the way, it, got, it helped me get really good at at kind of articulating and defining what am what am I headed for? What am I, you know? Because you start saying, "Here's where I'm headed," and it's like, "Well, actually, I don't really know where I'm, where I, what I want to do next." And um, you know, again, I have I have Linkwix, and um, it's not it's not like skyrocketing like it used to, but we've had some nice recovery, and you know, it's it's cruising along. Again, not not skyrocketing, but it's like I I want to explore some other things, and so that was that was one of the things I did. Um, any questions on that? Does that did I explain that clearly? Because um, I tried to summarize it really well, but again, I highly recommend doing that something like that. Even if you're not looking to to go in a different career direction, it was. Uh, Opportunities come out of it. Connections that you make to this day, you know, continue to to bless your life. So it was really good. So um, kind of uh, jumping forward, um, one of the things I started to do was I did some consulting with with a couple, a few different companies. So one was called First Call. And it was a great idea, but operationally it was very complicated. And essentially, um, the idea was you move into a house or an apartment and you call one number and you can get your gas hooked up, your electricity hooked up, um, your new phone or whatever is going on, and any other utilities and stuff like that. You just call one number and they do it all for you. So it's kind of like an intermediary service that would get you connected with uh, you know, Rocky Mountain Power in the right way, and Questar, and um, Comcast. And by the way, um, we could say, you know, you can go with Comcast, you can go with DirecTV, you can go with blah blah blah. And we don't really care which one it is because um, whoever you pick, they're going to give us a kickback. And so it was that whole idea. And um, it was that idea was was not started by me. It was it was um, the owner of. Uh, telemarketing firm that was working with like CenturyLink and companies like that um, but a friend of mine said hey I want you to come in and help us so I did and spent some months there and and uh, anyway long story short kind of got I landed uh, like a big apartment group where lots of people were moving in and they couldn't make it happen operationally to make all that work it's it's really complicated to make all that happen and so um, that was a a great experience um, that taught me several things Um, but that company kind of got put to the side and I was um, I was working with a gentleman named Clint Argyle who who started and owns a bank and um, construction company and a few other companies and he he basically was saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay each month to to have you and some other people I was working with go out and find companies that that I can potentially purchase. And so we did that. Long story short, he uh, he would meet with these companies and then realize like these guys come with lots of baggage. They uh, you know they think their company is worth this and it's really worth that because you know it's their baby and all kinds of stuff like that and so he said all right we're going to shift gears I want you to come up with with business ideas for startups and I want you to um, kind of poke holes in them run it through the gauntlet and if it makes it through your own analysis you know gauntlet of analysis then um, then I want you to present it to me And so essentially it was like, hey, come up with a business idea in the next week. And I've never considered myself really an idea guy. Um, Some people just kind of have like ideas all the time. I haven't, I'm not usually that guy. Um, I'm more like, okay, you know, that's a great idea. 
I can see how to make that happen and, and kind of go from there. Um, and so some cool things came out of that, and that was, that was really enjoyable. But some of the things that I learned that I wanted to share from those experiences were, like in a whole deeper level than I had ever done before, run lean and love it. Like in manufacturing, lean is extremely important. You know, lean processes and everything else. And applying that, not in so much of a process way, but as a mentality and as a, as a value. One of our values is to just be very lean. Do we really need this office space? Can we run virtually now? And just like love the idea of, of being frugal. Because it opens up all kinds of opportunities. You run out of your runway much later and... You can do lots of things. We talked about fell faster, and um, I was able to experience and live a level of accountability and discipline about getting things done that I hadn't previously really applied, and so I've always remembered and and applied that differently. So a couple of things just um, kind of uh, toward the end here as I wrap up. So Sweet Ruby... Um, actually, my wife is the genius behind this company. She continues to impress me with her ability to, um, you know, connect and use social media to grow this company. And so, I've been able to be, you know, we kind of done this together, and um, and so that's that's very different than than my typical kind of business to business services sort of thing that I tend to stay within for the most part. Um, you know, baby products sold online. So um, that's been really fun. And it's not expensive or hard to... It, okay, hard, yes, in some ways, but not expensive to, to get going in something like that in a lot of ways. Um, Dave mentioned that I had helped a couple of charter schools start. Um, I was working with a company... Um, called Red Apple Financial, working um, working for them and helping these charter schools to go from basically a board of parents that had an idea and turn it into like an actual building. You open the doors and students fill it up. And um, I wouldn't say that I played a huge role uh, more on the business side helping getting the business processes and everything figured out. But it was these these parents that were very inspiring that, that made this happen. And it was just a, a really incredible experience to see that um, these two schools actually open and be full with 95% or better enrollment from day one from the, when they opened the door. So... Um, and so right now... Um, so I got a call from um, Rich here, who's on the the front row. Um, good friend. I I um, I was on the board of a, a trade association, American Society of Training and Development, for a couple of years back in like 2006, 2007, somewhere around there. Got to know Rich. We were on the board together. Um, long story short, you know, we stay in touch and. Um, and he reached out to me, and so eLearning Brothers is a cool company. I don't have ownership in it. Um, started by two brothers, and um, it's so cool that Elvis comes with us to things that we do. Um, but Rich called me up. These these guys have this company that's just been really taking off, and you know, Inc. 500 list. Uh, 2014, 2015, um, really awesome company. Again, learning and education, which is really a part of my background, but then technology. And the reason, part of the reason I bring this up is, um, you know, Rich, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I really feel like, like the fact that I, I, you know, spent time on that volunteer board and got to know you and you, um, you know, I tried to always be 
uh, a good guy and you know like you, you valued something about our relationship and then uh, eventually you thought of hey trying to be a good guy to help this move forward and so those kinds of things pay off and so in my own humble way I just wanted to give an example of of how what are we talking like eight years eight nine years later or something you know things seven eight nine years you know something comes up and it's like oh I'm really glad I did that eight years ago and and so the you know to to conclude this is my last slide here I would just say that um in the words of Tom Hartman, who is a good friend of mine, former president of AutoLeave North America, he was, I was um, doing a service project with him on Saturday, and he said these words. Like, stuff like this just comes out of his mouth. And, and like, he was just talking. And um, he said, Failure is a naturally occurring milestone on the way to success. So, just like the chicken that... You know, it, it felt like a thousand steps um, that were probably tedious and painful along the way uh, to eventually crack out of the shell. Um, the The faster that we can we can work through all the little mistakes that are just a natural part of it, because it's a naturally failure is a naturally occurring milestone on the way to success. Wherever wherever you are today, wherever I'm at today, is what it's a zig, right? Or it's a zag. And so as long as we do we make the most of the zig that we're on, um, we doors will open up and we will end up in a good place. And business opportunities will arise. And so I you know, my plan is just to continue to do that as best as I can. And uh, that that's the message that I that I really wanted to kind of bring home to you guys that that um, you know don't just just take action just move and do it and um, and value people and value the the ability to provide value to people and success will come in in many different ways that we never imagined so um, thank you. Um, questions, right? I probably went over a little bit on time. Just a couple minutes, but any questions? Yeah. You can go first. I have two questions. Um, first, how do you personally define success? That is a good question. Um, you know, one one definition that I really love is the idea of, of, you know, have I have I continued to increase my ability to make a difference for other people, solve their problems? Um, I guess you know, really at the heart of it, my just kind of gut reaction is I define success as: am I being a good father? Am I being a good husband? And Am I being a good person in my community? And if that, if you do those things, and uh, and you get excited about something and pursue it, you know, here and there, then uh, I would call that success. Second question: um, What skill or skills would you credit uh, with your success at this point? Um, probably persistence. You know, just just trying to be steady. I may not be the most like um, energetic, you know, full of energy person. That's kind of not really me. I'm more I'm more of just like, you know, even, steady, and you know, sooner or later, we're gonna we're gonna get there. So I really feel like for me, although it's not the same for everybody, that that has been one of the things that's made a big difference. Um, I also think trying to 
trying to just be genuine with people. Um, I, I, I hope that I'm, you know, mostly that way, and, and it, it, you know, it ends up being good. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, when you started your first company, did you start it as an LLC, or what did you start? Um, right after I started, I can't remember exactly. You know what? Actually, it was a year, I think. Maybe like maybe like eight, nine, ten months. So I started it as a sole proprietorship just because, you know, it's complicated. It's not that complicated, but, you know, to keep things simple and just go for it. Because you want to know before you invest time. Again, it kind of goes back to you have to have everything set up and figure it out. But then you waste all that time, and then, then the business doesn't go anywhere. Um, just, you know zig to profitability and um, so I ended up setting up an S Corp within you know a year or less and that's to this day Linkwix is an S Corp and um, I like that because you know you you have a a reasonable wage that you can take home and pay all the taxes on and then you can take a dividend as well and pay not as many taxes if that makes sense so good question anyone else cool thanks